everyone, welcome in. This is Marlene with A Room to Bloom. So I am going to do a reading today with a couple of different decks. But before I start with that, I wanted to take a moment and open with a prayer today. I bought these prayer cards. They're, they're really lovely. And I thought, you know, let's bring forth a prayer before we enter into this. I also would like to ask that this um, reading be blessed. Um, and that we bring forth messages that are for the highest and best for the collective that we uh, bring in the angels, guides, ancestors, and ascended masters for their guidance and protection. All right, what prayer do you have for the collective here today? Okay, I have faith can move mountains, and that is Matthew 17, 20. I literally just watched this movie called Little Boy about this little boy his faith was so strong that he was, you know, shaking up a mountain. And so um, it is amazing when you begin to lean in it and you trust your thoughts, you move from your heart center, you think and feel from your heart center, um, and you slow down your pace of life, how you start to recognize and see how your faith has kind of come through and how fast you're manifesting um, your thoughts into your life, right? So it's really quite beautiful. And um, if you are struggling to have faith right now, my challenge to you is to take some time and to back away from the busyness of your life and allow your joy to move in, okay? So even if it is just very small things, um, I'll give you an idea. I like to just color. This is something I've been working on this morning. It's just something that is very relaxing. Sometimes I listen to stuff, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just let emotions or thoughts move through me and clear out. Um, and it's like, if you can imagine your mind being like this, like say like a messy closet, right? And, and you open it and each time you open it, you get frustrated. But you can't really get away from your mind, right? It's all there. So now what you're doing is if you just keep moving in life, you're just piling it on and piling it on and you're not taking time to process and release it. And, you know, there, there of course are moments and times when you do, but you may have a lot pulling at you, it, you know, whether that's people, your job, your hobbies, your interests, right? Because you want to be, you know, you want to be involved in things, but when we compile all this stuff on, Underneath all of that can be a lot of stuff that we have been carrying um, that we really haven't had time to process. Uh, we may have responded very quickly to something and kind of thought twice about that. We weren't really fully on board with it. And so this is about not slamming the brakes on, but it's absolutely about applying pressure to the brakes to start to slow your life down to a pace to clear the clutter of what's going on in your head, releasing what isn't serving you on, an, on a mental basis, on an emotional basis. And you can also therapeutically be working like on your environment. And it's very interesting as you begin to clear the clutter on the exterior, it, it's a very healing process. It's, it's, and you know, that you're like, yeah, I feel, I feel lighter, right? I have more um, space to process what's going on with me. I don't feel overwhelmed um, every time I come home that I don't feel like I can relax at home because there's so much stuff or things to do that I'm, you know, I have to take responsibility for. So this is just saying everything will work out in its time. And right now I need to take time for me. I need to take time to just sit with myself, acknowledge what's going on, release what isn't serving me up here, 
and um, take time to lean into my joy, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna start with this deck here that's absolutely beautiful. I don't use it very often. It is called the Healing Energy Oracle by Mario Duguay. And I'm gonna bring forth three cards here for the collective and see what messages come through. I just love these because they're very different. They're long, they're probably like eight inches long. <laughs> um, not easy to shuffle like other cards but I like shuffling like this anyway <laughs> okay so the first card we have is gratitude I am aware of the light in my life I direct my thoughts to the beauty in and around me I give thanks to God for every little thing that brings me joy thus I enlighten my thoughts riches surround me and I appreciate all that life brings me okay so I just listened to a gal and one of the things that she said is she said yeah she found a penny and she picked it up because it's like all right thank you universe this is a sign that you are sending me abundance financial abundance right she thanks the universe and she walks a little farther down the line and she finds a quarter and she's like yeah you know so <laughs> her money increased right she thanked the universe she said she walked a little further and there was another quarter so it was kind of like, you know, her vibration was high, her manifestations were coming in quickly. She was being in a uh, mode of being, uh, having and showing gratitude and speaking it aloud, um, acknowledging it. And so it's, it's when we have these, you know, whatever it is going on in our life. Yes, many times we are looking for the silver lining in events and, um, Sometimes it takes a little bit of hindsight for an event to pass to look back and go, okay, I can be grateful for whatever unfolded, right? But our goal is to be grateful in each moment and to look for moments um, or look for what we can be grateful for, right, in our life. So that we are inviting that energy, are magnetizing that energy into our life so that more comes to us to be grateful for, okay? So... Um, what what might seem seemingly small or that we take for granted a hot shower you know food in the refrigerator in the cupboards um you know fresh fruit and vegetables right um an extra half hour that like say something didn't work out or somebody was arriving late to somewhere that you were going to meet them but but you just felt like you needed to breathe for a minute. And it's like you get this phone call. It's like you're thinking that, I just wish I had an extra half hour. I would be so grateful for an extra half hour. I would be so grateful for an extra half hour. And you barely even get the thought out of your mind. Your phone is ringing and your friend says, you know what? I am so sorry, but I'm running a half hour late. Will that work out for you? And you're like, oh, you know, yeah. Not only will it work out for me, that is exactly what I was manifesting into my experience because I just need some time to pull myself back together, to formulate my thoughts, to release what isn't serving me up here, right? All right, what else would you like to show us here? Okay, the next one is the path to light. I make the conscious choice to move forward. I'm sorry, to move toward the light one step at a time. I transform my weakness into strengths by mastering my thoughts. I overcome obstacles with positivity and acceptance. I develop my gifts and I extend my light to every being unconditionally. So how beautiful, you know, this is really about mastering the thoughts. So when we really look at the chakra system and we learn about what that is, understanding that on a deep level, can help us to master our thoughts because we can start to recognize my thought was this and that is throwing me off of balance in this area of my life. If I get my thoughts balanced, my life starts to feel balanced, right? I start to, my chakra system um, can become balanced. Also calling on Archangel Metatron um, to help a balance and clear balance and align your chakras. You can do that. So this color is blue. 
Um, so blue is representing the throat chakra. So speaking your truth. Um, I make a conscious choice to move towards the light. So when you are speaking, um, making a conscious choice to speak words that are of the light, that are helpful, hopeful, and healing for others. Not words that drag someone down or take a shot at someone, right? That, you know, dismiss someone, right? So working, you know, it. if you're not used to this and, and you know, you're just kind of used to blurting things out, it is a practice and it is about being mindful and it is about slowing down. It's You start to move and at a slower pace so that you can become more aware of the way that you have been operating the way that you would like to operate and the actual steps it takes to get there. It says, I move towards the light one step at a time. You might get in your car after having a conversation and go, okay, I did pretty well at this part, but I recognized I kind of fell off the path here, but you recognized it, right? So recognizing it is really important because it says to yourself, I'm going to continue to work on that. I'm going to keep working on the way that I see things, the way that I see people and experiences. And I am going to start speaking more lovingly and caring, right? Okay. I'm going to shuffle one more time just because I wasn't doing that. By the way, the card on gratitude is pink, which represents the crown chakra. Okay. So connecting with... Um, the higher self, higher realms. Okay, the next one is acceptance. I accept every step that life presents me without resistance. I try to find out what the universe is trying to teach me so that I can grow. Thus, I advance in freedom on the path of light, right? And this is purple, which is representative of the third eye, okay? So again, you know, like I said, acceptance. I accept that every step of life does present presents me without resistance. So when there is resistance or, you know, you feel like something happened and, and you, like I said, you get in the car and you're like, oh, I didn't really, you know, I could have done that better, right? It's hindsight, but it's okay. These are, these are lessons. I accept that I am learning. I accept that I am a student of my own journey. I accept that um, I have made choices that maybe weren't in the most loving light, but I also accept myself where I am and understand that I am learning and I want to um, shift that, right? And really asking, so say you were out to lunch and somebody throws you a, um, a comment that is very kind of digs, but you try to just move through it, right? And, you know, you get in your car and you're thinking, what was that all about? And you're ticked off, right? If you can change that I'm ticked off mode to, okay, that didn't feel good. I didn't like that. But I know that everyone who comes into my life is a teacher who's here to teach me something about myself what were they trying to show me about myself by saying that to me and kind of digging into that? And, you know, you might come up with three different answers about why you believe that happened, but really kind of looking at it, you don't have to, you know, keep living in it and get angry about it, but say, okay, maybe this was the lesson, right? So just honoring it for what it was and maybe I'll get together with that person again and there'll be another something and then you'll be like, Okay, what was that? But it's not always about just completely taking it. It is about saying, um, you know, you might question, why are they saying that to you? You might um, stand up for yourself without, you know, coming back like, you know, like a, like a lioness. You know, it's, it just might be, you know, coming back wise, holding your power, not taking away theirs, uh, understanding that they too are on their own journey. And what we are doing is we are honoring each other's journey wherever they are at. 
but even you raising the question might challenge them to think about the words that they are speaking okay so we're going to leave that with those three cards so gratitude the path to light and acceptance now i got a new deck um i think it's yesterday and you know, I'm going to do this a little bit different. This deck is called the Magical Nordic Tarot. Um, the cards are lovely, but the book, the reading in the book for each card is, um, it's just written differently. And even though the cards have, you know, the kind of, they don't have one meaning, they have many meanings, but kind of a idea about them, right? Um I think that what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the book. I mean, I could do this reading without using the book, but there's some interesting, uh, I don't know, the way that she writes about some of these cards, I thought it would be interesting to share. The deck is by Jane Wallace. So I'm just going to ask here. Oh, so what do we got? Hopefully I didn't put any upside down. Okay, because I'm not going to read um, reversals here. But anyway, I'm just going to ask that these cards be blessed, that we bring through messages that are helpful, hopeful, and healing here for the collective. All right, and ask, what would you like to show us here for the collective today? So the first card I have is the Knight of Swords, and it speaks of spontaneity. The swords represents our thoughts, okay? So um, the, sword, the Knight of Swords is a fast-moving energy, um, kind of coming in, Quick. It can represent someone who is in love because the swords can kind of represent that or um, it, could, it can represent, uh, it could represent like sexual desire, you know, but, um, but let's just, I'm going to leave this for this right now. I'm going to pull the cards and then I'll go back to the book. So the next card I have is the 10 of pentacles and this is about, um, abundance, financial wealth, and the word on here is contentment, okay? I think I'm going to just set these other three cards to the side because they're so long, it's kind of throwing off my <laughs> thing here. Okay, um, here, I'll keep them up here though so I can see them. Mm. I should have maybe pulled two more of those. And you know what, I'm going to stop this right now and I am going to pull two more of those. I'm backtracking because I like to have five cards across and um, five of the other decks as well. Okay, so I have unconditional love here. My heart is free from resentment towards others. I open my eyes, the eyes of my heart, and I discover the light and beauty in every being. I am aware that suffering can cause distress and hurt in people. I see the pure child in everyone and I practice forgiveness, right? So just like I was saying, you get in the car and it didn't feel good, but you're you're moving into, okay, I trust that they are on their journey. Maybe they experience something. You hear the saying, hurt people, hurt people, because they're lashing out. They don't, they're, they haven't gotten to this place yet where they're, well, maybe they have, but they're still hurt, right? They're still working through their stuff, right? So this is about unconditional love when someone is, um, struggling right and so instead of carrying resentment for them you're choosing to open the eyes of your heart and discover the light and beauty in every being okay the next one I have is trust I trust life and my strengths each moment guides me to the light everything on my path is placed here for my growth okay yellow is about that solar plexus chakra I was speaking about and by the way, I don't know if I showed this. This is like a, a teal color. Um, so representing tranquility, unconditional love, right? Think about if you're at a beach, you're just really relaxed. And it's like, yeah, this is good, right? So then we move into this place of trust. I trust life and my strengths. Each moment guides me to the light. Everything on my path is placed here for my growth. Everyone is a teacher and they are here to help me grow. All right, so now we're gonna set those aside. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so the Knight of Swords then would fall under the Gratitude card is where I'm getting at here. I'm gonna move this over a little, okay. 
Okay, then we have the Ten of Pentacles, which falls under the path to light and contentment. Oh, I kind of did backwards. What else would you like to show us here? Okay, I have the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is um, a messenger. The Page is a messenger. Um, could be bringing in a message actually about finances or a new experience um, or opportunity that might be coming your way. Okay, that falls under the word acceptance. What else do you have for us here? Okay, this is temperance. So this is about having patience and, you know, finding harmony in life. Um, there you go. And this falls under the unconditional love card. So, you know, perfect harmony under unconditional love. What else would you like to show us here? Okay, I have judgment. So judgment, um, so forgiveness of yourself and others for actions that you've taken or actions that you have, actions, words, or whatever that you felt ha you um, have experienced. So um, moving into this place of forgiveness. Okay. Could you, and I am just going to ask for clarification here, please, on the Knight of Swords. They have the Nine of Swords, and this is about mental conflict. This is about where someone might be struggling to sleep. Um, so there could be a Knight of Swords in your energy or environment or life um, who has been having a tough time sleeping. Um, you could be the Knight of Swords energy. Um, but are having a mental conflict of some sort. Um, just So this is would be really helpful, like I said, for backing off of like the busy life. Life will work out. Life will work out. But just acknowledging, I have to take this time. I have to get, I have to start to release these swords, this mental conflict, because the swords are all about our thoughts. Like we're just getting just, bombarded and we're we're living in our thoughts that's where a lot of people just can't sleep at night because they're so got so much going on and so if you are having a tough time sleeping that is really indicative of like a metal a mental conflict going on and it is about taking time and saying what is it that i need to release to start to get out of this bondage of this mental conflict okay um, and by the way, that falls under gratitude. So it, it may be allowing yourself to move into a place of gratitude. Okay. The next one is the two of cups. <clears throat> the two of cups is about union. This can be about partnership. It can be about a love relationship. Um, but it does fall under the 10 of pentacles. Okay. Card is blue, so speaking of communication with your partner. Um, and it falls under the path of light. And mastering your thoughts. I develop and extend my light to all beings unconditionally. Okay, what else? We have the chariot, which is about movement. This is number seven in the tarot deck. And chariot is representative of um, fast moving action. You know, some people say like it, it can be the police, but oftentimes the, the animals on the chariot are one white, one black. So it's about balance, but it is about moving. So something is coming in quickly for you. Um, could be a new experience with this um, Two of Cups partnership, um, a union of some sort, um, having the finances to do that. But releasing, being released from that mental conflict will be very helpful. Okay, the next one is the Knight of Pentacles. This is a slower moving uh, knight that comes in. 
um, very patient, kind, and interesting that this falls under the temperance card about harmony. So temperance is about having patience, and so it falls under that. To, um, it's that remind, reminder to work on your patience, because if you feel so rushed in life, we can so wind up in this Nine of Swords mental conflict with ourselves. It's just that we're carrying so much. And this is where it's time to acknowledge and realize that it's time to maybe set some things down. Okay. What else do we have here? I have the Hermit. And this is about wisdom. Taking time to reflect, to look at um, what's going on in your life. To really kind of get in touch with your spiritual spirituality. With connecting with all that is. And it's about the forgiveness. Now I'm going to take um, one card here. Yeah, so, um, you know, this is the death card and or what's called the rebirth. So it's about like the transition. So as you move through this experience, you're experiencing like a, a, a death of a situation or a rebirth of birthing into something new. So whatever, maybe, you know, the death could be of this Nine of Swords energy that you just don't want to carry around anymore. And it's like, no, I am so ready to release that. It's like I'm exhausted. And trying to do it all at one time could feel staggering, I guess. Um, but like I said, applying the brakes, not slamming the brakes, because you do have to do the work. You don't want to do what's called spiritual bypassing, where it's like, Okay, I'm just getting rid of all that. And and then you think that that was the answer. But the answer is really to pull apart one of these swords at a time and say, what, you know, I have these nine swords. What was it that was cutting me so deeply, right, that made me feel so restless that I couldn't sleep, that was so heavy, so burdened? Am I the personality that takes on so much? Will I continue to do this? Even though I might let this go, as soon as I let this go, I jump right into something else. Can I stop jumping and move into this place of the hermit and really start looking at myself, my life, my experiences, my journey? Where have I been? Where am I going? And really appreciating the present moment because it is in the present moment where we really do the healing work. Okay, and what is on the bottom is the five of cups. This is um, indicative of the subconscious and what has been, you know, that you're feeling underneath. And this is representative of hope. It's that something has happened um, in your life and you're, you know, you're, you're sad about it, but you are still hopeful at the same time, right? And it's an emotional experience because it's the cups, which, you know, hold water or when you think about like tears or emotions, right? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I want to go to the Knight of Swords. I just wanna read this. We're at 28 minutes. I just wanna check this out. So on the Knight of Swords, she addresses immaturity, fickleness, ignorance, and instability. So even asking yourself the question, because this is can often be this first card, like your energy. So in what ways might you be being immature, fickle, ignorant, or unstable? Okay. The Knight of Swords is the troublemaker of the deck, impulsive, reckless, and unpredictable. Um, it could be the main energy that is also affecting your life. Um, he causes mayhem wherever he goes and often lights up your world one minute and then causes a hurricane in the next. He encourages you to trust what you see, not what you hear, as people's words may not match their actions. <clears throat> so arguments and power struggles with others are likely and you may discover some shocking truths about someone. A friend or love interest's hot and cold behavior could leave you feeling confused. And there might be some tension in your family as well. Now, one thing that I do want to say about this, and I've spoken on this before, <clears throat> is that I finally learned to, when, when someone says to me, oh, so-and-so is doing this, right? It, people that I trusted fully, 100%, right? And I started realizing that there is a lot more to this 
what am I going to believe? So I moved into my personal experiences with someone. I remove the middleman, the hearsay, the third party, anything. And it's like, my experience with this person is this and that I know, trust, and um, lean into. Okay. So again, trust what you see and not what you hear. As people's words may not match their actions. So I absolutely experienced in, um, a lot of that. And so when you have a lot of players in the game, it can feel as if they are trying to create chaos in your life. And then what you do is you just go, not playing. I'm not playing. I'm here with integrity. I'm here with truth. I'm here with honesty. I'm here with an open heart, with love. I am here to shine my light and I'm not playing in the chaos. If that is the game that you want to play, then you play that. But I step aside and I remove myself from that energy. And when that energy goes away, it, all of a sudden your life starts um, feeling lighter. I actually just spoke with someone who mentioned that they're talking to fewer and fewer people. Um, and I could very much recognize that in the, in the conversation that the chaos has diminished, right? So if you are trying to do something you love and your phone keeps going off over and over, Remember that that can simply be a challenge for you to interrupt you. It's like, oh, don't let her follow her joy, right? So it's about taking your power back, getting up and just turning your phone off and say, no, I'm, I am so going to be in the now moment. I'm going to be very present as I do this. I'm not getting interrupted by every email, every phone call, everything that wants to interrupt me. I claim my space my now moment, my personal power, and my connection with my higher self and God, right? So, all right, so the next, so being aware of that energy, what might be going on, and again, spontaneity. Okay, so the next one is the Ten of Pentacles. <clears throat> and this one, the, the key words on it are closeness, competition, I'm sorry, completion, love, and self-awareness. And the number 10 is about completion. So um, love and self-awareness. So the 10 of pentacles is always a wonderful sight to behold and is thought to be one of the most positive cards in the deck. A card of luck, love, and happiness. It often represents two families coming together and becoming one. Weddings, pregnancies, and second marriages are all possible, and couples could decide to move in together. Two. It also, it can also represent generous gifts from family members, inheritance of a home or large sum of money. Additionally, Cupid could bring two people together at a wedding or a party for a loved one. Okay. So the next one <clears throat> is the page of pentacles. My, my phone just showed me a message about my storage. This could end up having to be a two-part reading. I just want to share that in case. Um, so the page of pentacles, again, like here, it says new experiences. So the key words are listener, creativity, passionate, and organization. The page of pentacles is the bearer of positive, positive news and opportunities to grow. With the fearlessness of a child and practicality of an adult, he is the student of life and master of reinvention. From pursuing a new career path to learning a new skill or furthering your education, he symbolizes the desire to learn, evolve, and experience more of the world. If there's someone you like, ask them out. If your relationships lost its spark, spice things up. Positive news about finances, exams, or job interviews is likely, and a house could be bought or sold too. All right. So now we move into the temperance. 
which is, uh, let's see here. Well, how about I get to the right one? Oh, I had it right here. Okay. Anyway, a young woman stands before a lake and cautiously tests the water with one foot in and one foot out, symbolizing her emotional needs and earthly demands. She's ready to let go of the old and to welcome the new. A large house representing her old beliefs and foundations stands tall behind her, while a small salmon synonymously with healing synonymous with healing, swims happily in the water. Beautiful flowers signifying her growth can be seen dancing in the background while her, animal, well, her spirit animal, a horse, known for its strength, watches her from a distance. The key words for the temperance are healing, emotions, balance, serenity, and patience. Okay. Meaning, temperance is a card of balance. It often appears when the pressures of life become too heavy to carry and the actions of others start disrupting your peace. Whether it's canceling plans in order to stay home or simply taking a few days off to relax, it marks a time when healthy boundaries are key and your well-being needs to come first. Unreasonable demands from others are likely and there could be some discord around you too. Breathe and keep calm, for this too shall pass, and your outer world will match your inner world once again. So just like I said, got things pulling at you. When you try to take this time to come into balance, there will literally be, it's like, you know, uh, challenges that come your way on this spiritual journey, all right? And you have to ask yourself, do I jump every time? my thing goes off, even if you are a business owner, right? Because that's what I used to do. I used to think nobody could do it but me, right? Or, you know, at different times. But at some point, it's like, um, I worked with somebody who gave me this great advice. He said, put on a message that says, I answer my calls between this time and this time, and I, I pick up my messages and I return calls. Please let me know what this is regarding so that I can be better prepared when I return your call. So I took my power back and it was so um, rewarding, you know? It wasn't about taking power away from one, anyone else. It was just that everyone else can create chaos and make everything seem like an emergency because it might feel like an emergency to them, but it all gets handled in its divine timing, right? We're on God's clock here, all right? So the next one, the Knight of Swords, pardon me, the nine of swords. The key words are mindset, fear, anxiety, and recuperation. The nine of swords represents the dark night of the soul, which is the first time I've ever read that. By the way, I wanted to mention that. It represents a time when your mind becomes your enemy and negative thoughts follow you around like shadows. Sleepless nights and tearful outbursts are likely, and feelings of guilt, remorse, and regret could invade your mind like a Nordic army. A loved one's distress may also weigh on your shoulders heavily and the crosses you bear, professionally and personally, could seem too heavy to carry. Pause, breathe, and come back to your present. Your anguish may be strong, but the resilience of your spirit is stronger. Okay, So this is always about pausing and to recognize that I feel like my life is spinning out of control and what steps do I need to take to start lightening the load? That very much may be saying no to many things for a while. Not running out to the store every 10 minutes, right? Um, when, you know, when you are anxious too and you have anxiety, um, like it can be hard to even uh, write a thorough list. Like, let's say you, you need some groceries, right? And, and it's not that you sit home and you open the refrigerator. You're just like, 
like you're too busy, you're just spinning and, and you can't even think like that. And even if you do, it's almost as if you can't even see everything in your refrigerator clearly. And so you write sort of a, you know, a half list, right? And you get to the store and you make it through and you get the list or you might miss a couple things even because you're distracted, right? Um, and then you get home and they're like, oh, I needed this, I needed that, right? So you, so you just weren't even there and you're not even present. Or if you don't write a list and you go to the store, you're constantly playing that game. And so this is about um, coming back to you so that you can get back, you know, regain, put together the, your fragmented parts and feel whole again, whole in yourself. This takes work, it takes work and it takes conversations. If you share a home with others, if you have family, and you say, when I am a better, I need to focus on me for a while so that I can be a better me for all of you, right? It's not about saying, I'm only going to do this for two days. It's like, no, I'm completely shifting my life. And literally every day I'm taking a half hour in the morning, a half hour in the afternoon, and a half hour at night to regain myself, if that is all you can start with. And then... Um, instead of working six days a week, it's like I'm going to start working four and a half days a week. And one of those half days I'll spend with my family, but I'm starting to take a whole day for myself to do what I need to do to flip this around. Just flip this around and to stop living in this place of fear, anxiety, and constant recuperation. Okay. The next one is the Two of Cups. <clears throat> The key words on it are soulmate, fulfillment, love, and balance. The Two of Cups symbolizes a powerful bond between two souls, a card of fate, synchronicity, and divine intervention. It often predicts or confirms the arrival of a soulmate or a kindred spirit in your life. The universe will be playing matchmaker right now in love, work, and in friendships. Deeper commitments and relationships, including proposals, can be expected, and a wonderful new relationship could be on the way for singletons too. A card of unity rather than division, it can also signify the rekindling of an old relationship, and, a, and it is a wonderful omen for business partnerships. And that falls under the Ten of Pentacles, which feels very, very good, very rewarding, and very much could be, you know, it could be a... a a marriage that, you know, wealth is involved. It could be a marriage where a partnership in business endeavors um, is created a, a, a business partnership as well, right? <clears throat> so the next one is the chariot. <clears throat> and this one says, a young woman stands upon a chariot, confident, courageous, and full of ambition. She knows what she wants and nothing and no one can stop her. Her two dogs, her spiritual guardians, and, a faith, and faithful companions stand in front of the chariot, awaiting their mistress's instructions. Her heart and mind, symbolized by the images of the sun and moon, are in perfect alignment. She is finally on the right path and prepared for both the light and the dark parts of the journey ahead. The key words are journey, conflicted, indecision, choices, and direction. The message is, I decide my destiny. The meaning, you know what you want, and now is the time to grab it with both hands, for your chariot awaits. Ooh, I, I just got goosebumps all over. Everything you need, courage, confidence, and determination are already within you. There is no room for fear and doubt. A long journey lies ahead, either towards something you desire or away from something you don't. Self-belief is essential right now. Master your emotions and you will master your fate. Obstacles will be overcome with inner rather than outer strength and the potential for victory is great. Yeah, so, so really lovely here. And I wanna say something, the year 2023 when you add up the digits is the number seven, which represents the chariot card in the tarot, which is about a fast moving year, our fast moving energy, okay? So thinking about that, you may experience things very quickly in 2023. And if you are wanting to manifest things 
taking time to get quiet with yourself, to get your thoughts in the right place, right? To find balance within yourself. This is the year that will be helpful in that manifesting. Okay, the next one is the Knight of Pentacles. <clears throat> and here are the key words are learning, and this also came up, you know, had patience on it. So learning, prosperity, entrepreneur, and manifestation. The Knight of Pentacles is a card of patience, commitment, and planning. The seeds for success have been planted. Now is the time to water their roots and to wait for them to blossom. Slow and steady progress rather than instant results should be expected in love, work, and finances. Planning, budgeting, and forward thinking are essential. As investments made now may reap amazing rewards in the future. A promotion, dream home, or committed relationship could also be on the horizon, but might take longer than expected to materialize. Be patient. It'll be worth the wait. <clears throat> okay, and the next card that I have here is Judgment. Sorry, I, I thought I, I don't know, I jumped around differently than I was originally anticipating to. Um, so the judgment is number 20 in the deck, which may mean something for you. A young woman studies her reflection in a lake while a caterpillar synonymous with rebirth sits on a leaf nearby. Calm and full of compassion for her younger self, she is ready to let go of her regrets and make peace with her past. Her reflection, symbolizing how she perceives herself now smiles up at her from the water below, stronger, wiser, and kinder to herself than before. The lake, representing her past, lies peacefully before her, while the trees, signifying her growth, stand tall and strong at the edge of the water. I want to just quickly show you this. So there she is in the water. The trees are in the background. It's her old self smiling back up at her. And she forgives her old self. The key words are light. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong page. The key words are second chances, guilt, reflection, betrayal, and insecurity. I forgive myself and others. The meaning of the card is the judgment card denotes a time of healing, second chances, and rebirth. Mixed emotions can be expected as old doors open reopen and faces return from the past trust your own judgment trusting your own judgment will be of the utmost importance right now blasts from the past are likely including messages from exes and dreams about old school friends pause reflect and look back before you move forward you'll soon know which chapters to revisit and which ones to close once and for all I've um, actually noticed that happening in my life. Um, all of a sudden, and, and we're in a retrograde right now, which means that any words that kind of start with R-E, like review, redo, regret, right? Like, so um, kind of come to visit during this time. And it can be people of the past that are resurfacing, right? And so like you might not hear from them, them and then there'll be a retrograde and certain people will reach out to you. And it's about, are you going back? Are you going to reopen that door and reconnect and rebloom that past relationship? Or, you know, looking at it and saying, did that relationship, did I learn my lesson from that relationship? And is this time, is this the time to just let that go, right? Um, and it's not about, oh, I'm so done with that person. It's not about that. It's about what did I learn about myself? If I were to think about a different future, even though like they may be trying to open that door, is it a door that you want to reopen yourself, right? Or walk through. Maybe that's what I want to say. So the next one is the Hermit card, and this is the number nine. 
Okay, the hermit sits under a beautiful waterfall, undisturbed and completely content in his own company. He sits in quiet meditation, peacefully channeling his inner guidance and wisdom. A hare symbolizing intuitive messages and spiritual knowledge sits behind him. So a, a rabbit, okay? Um, while a roe deer signifying spiritual growth and divine guidance can be seen in the background. Completely isolated from the world around him, he cherishes being over doing and spiritual abundance over material riches. The key words here are isolation, meditation, withdrawal, contemplation, and reflection. Take time to breathe and to contemplate your next move. The meaning of it is known as a card of soul searching. The hermit marks a time when you need to switch off your phone log off of your social media, and enjoy some much-needed alone time. Spiritual practices like journaling and meditating may call to you now, and your appetite for learning and writing will be insatiable. Time spent in nature will also replenish your energy, while a mentor could offer you some invaluable guidance too. Think twice before making any decisions and be patient. The answers will come when you are ready. The Nordic tree of life was thought to have three wells under it, all of which would water its roots and keep it alive. So like I said, especially if you are in this energy, or you have someone around you who's challenging you, right? Say this Knight of Swords energy, or you are feeling like that. And you're maybe wanting to shift your ways because you've been carrying a lot around with you with the way that you've been moving through life and you want to move from the knight energy right you want to move up from a knight to a king's energy you want to start embodying the king's energy but now in order to start shedding these swords what you're looking to do is you are looking to get into the hermit mode so that you can really do some self-reflecting and like i said i know that this is uh, much easier said than always done but believe me it is for your highest and best and and even if you have a busy house like um, let's say you have children and your kids are in every sport and every day you get home you rush home you eat as fast as you can you run out the door and it has been going on like this for years it may, might be the time to say you know what we're just going to pull back a little we're going to start doing some things differently. I'm not saying don't have your kids in sports, but you know, it might be pick one sport a season or, or a year, right? Um, it might be, we're not going to do the traveling sports. We're going to do a six week program and we're just going to honor that. And then we're going to pull back. So it's about we're active and then we, we move into a state of being and appreciation, right? Because the other thing is if, if that is uh, the way kids are raised, then they think that their whole life has to be on go, go, go. And, and we're trying to show our kids that it doesn't have to be, we don't have to get to this point of the nine of swords. We don't have to go there. We don't have to get there. And so when we teach our kids earlier that being instead of running is is very good for the spirit and for the soul and honoring our um, joy in ways that aren't just all materialistic, um, but through creativity, through words, through writing, you know, through acts of kindness, whatever that is, right? So it's, it's, it can be definitely about a life shift, a mind shift, um, but starting with yourself and then maybe involving others if you have others in your home, right? And then, you know, I say maybe, but it's it's going to be important to have a conversation. But also I want to say that, so let's say that you are married. You might want to say this to your spouse. This is what I need, and I really want to encourage you to do the same. So I will, you know, if, if we can work out this time so I can have that, I want you to take the same kind of time, some downtime, and start, let's take it, start looking at what have we been carrying around that is affecting our life so greatly. And then also encouraging kids to do the same thing. Setting up places 
whatever in their room or in the house that gives them time that is not all electronics, all TV, all cell phones, right? Um, and then like, even if they're like, even books, like, so books, you know, bring your mind into a story. But if it is simply a, like painting, coloring, um, crafts, creativity, right? Just having different things and let the, the mind start flowing, then different things come up. And then also encouraging keeping a notepad by so that when ideas and thoughts come up that um, they might write something down. It just might be a question. It might be whatever. But then you can, you know, have a family meeting later about the things that came up that you are going to try to work through on an individual basis and then maybe as a family unit as well, right, or a couple. Um, so anyway, I enjoyed actually reading the book for these. I, I really like how she wrote, wrote out the stories with the cards, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Um, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. All right, take care.